Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord. So glad you are here today. What a beautiful day God has blessed us with on this wonderful, peaceful day to sing about God's grace and his love for each of us. Glad that you are here in person or online. If this is your first time with us in person, we have a special gift for you just outside these doors at our Welcome Center. Just a little thank you for being here with us this morning. Hope you'll fill out a little card. Let us get to know you a little bit better. Uh, just a couple of announcements. We are definitely in this Advent season. All of our services and events are detailed in our weekly newsletter. If you're not getting that, let us know in the church office. You can also go to our website uh, for all these events. First of all, you'll see today things look a little differently as we have our uh, wonderful Christmas cantata and our music today as we celebrate the peace of Christ. This afternoon, family Christmas party. Today at 6 o'clock, it's in our Family Life Center. Uh, bring a covered dish to share. So that'll be fun for our church family. Come, and I hope you'll come and be a part of that. A lot of fun. We're going to have a good time together this evening at 6. Jet Set Christmas Gathering is this Wednesday, December 7th. It's 11 a.m. in our fellowship hall. Uh, this is the, um, uh, their monthly meeting with wonderful food. You need to bring a covered dish for that. Meat will be provided. It's for our senior citizens, but it, really anybody. And the Geriatrics World Famous Singing Group will be there uh, for us on, on Wednesday as well. And then the Women's Ministry having a Christmas lunch on December 10th, 11 a.m., uh, to 1 p.m. in our Family Life Center. You can RSVP uh, still for that. Bring a covered dish to share. The turkey is going to be provided for that. So you see the main theme throughout all this. <laughs> Food. We eat. So come and be a part of, uh, of this. This will be a wonderful time to celebrate this wonderful season um, together. You notice these beautiful flowers today. They are in loving memory of Pamela and, and Glenn's son, Glenn Roy Walker Jr. by his family. We wanted to, to bring that to your attention today as well. Uh, one of the greatest, I think, um, traditions that we do in the life of the church at Christmas is the lighting of our Advent candles. And we have uh, the, the lighting and the readings today from the Cars and the Baird family. They're going to come forward to do this for us. Good morning. Listen uh, with me to the words from Isaiah chapter 11, verse 9 and 10. They will not hurt or destroy on my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. We are the followers of that root of Jesse that Isaiah spoke of. We are the ones who are now called to stand as a signal to the world, to all of creation, that peace is the will of the one who created us. Peace is the knowledge of the Lord that we proclaim from sea to shining sea. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea proclaiming, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near, and bear fruit worthy of repentance. Matthew 3, 1 and 2. We light these candles, the candle of joyful hope and the candle of proclaimed peace, in part to remind ourselves that we are a people rising toward God's promise. But we also light them as a sign to the world, an announcement there are some who hold on to hope and there are some who work the ways of peace. We stand as a sign that Emmanuel is still our fervent prayer. Pray with me, please. Gracious God, we thank you for the great hope and peace that you offer to all who will believe. Help us to strong, stand strong in this world as a signal to all that your peace, which passes all understanding, is a great gift from you. In Jesus we pray, amen.
Great job. Thank you all. Let's stand up and greet each other. Find a face. Shake a hand. Someone you don't know. Let them know you're glad they're with us today. Glad you're worshiping with us online. Okay, let's gather back at our hymn, or our, sorry, our pew, where we'll join our voices in our opening hymn. We've, uh, we in the choir here have taken uh, our opening hymn. Please stand as you're able. Uh, we've taken the words to the opening hymn and, and, and pushed them together with another piece of music. I think you'll like it. Uh, I'll direct you as to when to sing, but have a fun uh, time here, our opening hymn, and uh, the choir may throw on something special at the end. We'll see. All right. On this day.
Thank you so much. And thank you for the way that you give to your church. It makes a big difference in how we do the ministries here and outside of here. And there's different ways that you can give uh, that we encourage you to, to do any of these ways that are on the screen. You can do it in person. We do have in each of these pews um, envelopes and we have our collection boxes as you as you exit the sanctuary today. Uh, you can mail it in here to the church. Attention to Nancy Garrison. You can go online through your bank, through our website. You can even text. So just different ways to be able to give back to say thank you for all that God has done uh, for us. Let's thank him for our offerings. Heavenly Father, we present to you now and in this week a part of ourselves, the financial part of our, our giving of ourselves to you. And Lord, we know that when you receive these, you will bless them. You will bless the gifts and the givers to the works of your kingdom here on earth so that your gospel would spread, your kingdom would grow. And through these ministries, more and more people would know about Christ. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. We come this time for our morning prayer. I know that you have different things and concerns on your heart that God wants to hear of these things. I think he longs for that relationship with us. So I encourage you to go to the Lord in this time, but also to thank him. To thank him for the joys, to thank him for the ways of what we've just been hearing about his peace. 
Thank you for that peace that, that he gives to each of us. So let's go to the Lord. Spend a few moments in your quiet time with God, and then I'll lead us in our prayer together. Let us pray. Father, we're so grateful for this a new day. It's filled with opportunities. It's filled with, with our chances to be closer and closer to you. Your word tells us that with each new morning comes new mercies, new blessings, new opportunities. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is not even promised. We are in this moment and this day. And it's Sunday. And we have chosen to be able to come and go to church, to worship you with one another to lift our voices, to open our hearts, to feel and experience you in your hope, in your peace. God, for many of us, we have had a less than peaceful week. For many of us, we look at the week that's ahead and wonder through the chaos where we will see your peace. So we start this day, we start this week in your presence. Lord, we're grateful for the, the music we have heard already, the song that you've placed in each of our hearts. And even during this season, when things are kind of hectic, when deadlines have to be met, when so many things are going on, help us to just take a moment to rest in your peace. God, you know our hearts, you know our prayers before we even mention them, before we even utter a sound, but you long for that relationship with us, and so we come to you, knowing that you hear us, knowing that you are what you promised, our Emmanuel, God with us. So hear our prayers. Search our hearts. Still our minds. And may we focus on you. Thank you for Jesus, for his love, for his life, for his birth, what we're celebrating. For a sacrifice, for his love. And for a peace that he says can only come from him. Remind us of that this week. Remind us of that peace that comes from Christ in each situation that we find ourselves in. Thank you for your spirit that guides us, that directs us, that shows us the way. By that same spirit, guide us when we leave from this place today to show others the peace of Christ. Forgive us, guide us, and direct us. All this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And we pray the prayer that he taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Amen. Beautiful. Thank you for that choir. They'll be back to sing a few more songs for you. Our scripture reading for today is John 14, and read in verse 27. I ask you to stand as you are able for our gospel reading today. John 14, verse 27 will be on the, the screen for you uh, in your few Bibles as well. If you have your Bibles, I encourage you to, to open them up. Here, here are these words from Jesus, John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our Lord, our Rock, our Redeemer, our Prince of Peace. Open our hearts so we can hear your message to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First of all, for those of you that got incredibly confused last Sunday, I go back and I look over the the message and the whole entire service. We have it videoed. And I opened last Sunday by saying, what a wonderful time this is of the year to experience Lent. (laughs) I didn't know I said that until I went back and looked. It's Advent. But you see, it sounds kind of alike. And they're very important dates in the life of all Christians. But then I started thinking about it. Maybe there's a comparison because if the one thing or four things they have in common is hope, peace, joy, and love. So I messed up on purpose is the way I'm going to look at it. (laughs) But we are in Advent. And last week we we lit the the candle of hope. And, And what a wonderful word that is for us. It has so much meaning, it has so much connection to who we are as as God's people, as children of God. And my hope is, within the last week, you have felt some of that, you've experienced some of that, and maybe you've even given some to somebody. And today we had the the cars and bears light our our candle of of peace. Peace is an interesting thing because of all of these four, hope, peace, joy, and love, peace is something that you really can choose to have. You really can make the choice to be peaceful or not. You really do have the opportunity each day to decide if you want to offer somebody peace. In the early church, they passed the peace. We call it the greeting time now, or as a friend of mine called it, the grip and grin, where you just grip someone's hand and grin. There's not a whole lot of peace in that. You're almost doing it because we told you to. Get up and greet your neighbor. Say hello to someone. Find someone you don't know. Move around and and say hello. We're telling you to do it. Now, some of you could sit there and go, nope, not going to do it. I'm going to sit right here in my peaceful area and not get up and go share that peace. But we are called as children of God to do just that, to offer peace, to give that to somebody. You can tell when someone's not in a good mood, right? 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 You could, you could tell. I had the opportunity to stand with the choir and look out at y'all. And I said to Dave, I went, oh, that's what they look like. <laughs> y'all look different from back there for some reason than you do a little bit closer. Up closer, Dave, they smile. It's okay. They're not as scary as they look. But you can tell when someone is lacking peace. There's chaos in their life. There's something going on in their life to where it's not going well. What would happen if you, a child of God, went up to them and offered them peace. That might be the one thing that they're lacking. This time of year, a lot of people go out to eat. A lot of people go out and do things and and get gift cards and go out and enjoy that. And those servers, sometimes they don't look very peaceful. They're running around crazy. They're trying to get everything and do it right for you. What would happen if you offered them a little bit of peace along with some grace and some patience? So peace is is an interesting thing, and you look at it differently, and you see it differently. Those of you who don't know, I wasn't born a pastor. I didn't come out of the womb preaching. I didn't do it until I was 29 years old. Before that, I had a plethora of jobs. Just about everything you could think about, I think I probably did, running from this calling. One of those things was I drove an 18-wheeler coast to coast. Yeah, 
I heard the guy go, ooh, that was cool. I got to get up in this cockpit and knew all gears and, and how to do all that and, and pull things all over the country. I've been to every state but two. So that's pretty cool. One night in Colorado, after midnight, I had the midnight to 5 a.m. shift, tandem driving with another guy I knew. And it was in the middle of, summer, of winter, and it was after midnight, and we were on top of this hill, and there was nobody out there, and there was snow everywhere, and the sun was bright, the moon was brightly shining. It looked so bright, reflecting off that snow, it looked like the middle of the day. It was incredible. CB and truckers don't always have the most peaceful conversations. They don't always have the, the kind talk that we would like to hear. But that moment, I said on the CB, tell me there's no God. Look outside. The whole CB world got quiet. Except for one other guy. And we had this conversation for about an hour driving through these mountains of Colorado at the peacefulness that was around us. Of all the other experiences I had, I only did that for about six months. That's the longest lasting memory that I have of that time. Peace is something you choose to see. It's something you choose to live in. It's something you choose to give to other people. A couple of different um, uh, quotes that, that, that I like. Mother Teresa said, peace begins with a smile. Seems pretty simple. The Dalai Lama said, do not let behavior of others destroy your inner peace. Do not let the behavior of others destroy your inner peace. LBJ, Linda B. Johnson said, Peace is a journey of a thousand miles, and it must be taken one step at a time. And then Cy Miller and Jill Jackson. Do you know Cy Miller and Jill Jackson? I bet you do. They wrote, Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Some of my, my, my favorite quotes. But I think my favorite, especially what I've seen lately, is, is one that has definitely, I think, become my new favorite quote on, on, what, on what peace is. And it's unknown. So I could have said, I said this, but I decided not to. Peace, it does not mean to be in a place where there's no noise, no trouble, or hard work. It means to be in the midst of those things and still be calm in your heart. That's beautiful. Because that's life, right? That, that's the, the normal things, I think, of, of the life that we, we live in. There are times where there is a lot of noise and there's trouble all around and there's hard work that has to be done. But somehow, in the midst of all of that, we still can look at it and go, I have a calmness about me. I have a, a peacefulness about me. One of the, the things that I never think of when I think of the word of peace is when an orchestra is warming up. Have you ever listened to an orchestra get ready before the performance? You're like, they're terrible. <laughs> There's no way this is going to sound good. They're playing 75 different notes at the same time. But yet in that chaos, <laughs> peace comes. And it's beautiful. And we've heard that already today. We've been blessed in this because I can promise you for what they've done to prepare for this, there's been some noise, there's been some trouble getting it together. It's been hard work. But to hear, and I'm just going to say two of them, to hear Alyssa and An Angelique uh, sing the way they did, that's beautiful. That, that's a peacefulness. I found myself just sitting in that and listening to that and loving it. But my favorite scripture on peace is what we read this morning. Peace I leave with you. Jesus saying this to his disciples because he said, I'm about to leave you. And they had to have felt some, some fear there. He said, don't worry about it. Peace I leave with you. But it's not any kind of peace. It's not the peace that we, that we read about in this sense. It's the peace that can only come from Jesus Christ. My peace I leave with you. Don't worry. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. Many times the scripture is, is read at, at funerals for the families to remind them Jesus is with them. Jesus is about to leave his disciples and he says this to them. Even in the noise, the trouble, the hard work, remember my peace. Remember that, that peace that can only come from me because you're going to face these things. You're going to have some hard times. You're going to have some trouble. There's going to be some noise in this world that keeps you from feeling that experience of true peacefulness. 
So hold on to that, he says. I think if you know Jesus, then you know peace. Right? It makes sense. It goes together. If you know Jesus Christ, then you've experienced and you know the peace that he can give to you. Know Jesus, know peace. Change the spelling a little bit. Know Jesus, know peace. N-O. Know Jesus in your life. No, 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 Jesus guiding you and directing you in your steps of life, probably peace is not going to be there either. Kind of makes sense. We live in a world that needs to hear and see and experience and feel the peace of Christ in us. Because if we don't have it, If we listen to all this today and hear this great music and we go out of this place today and we go to those restaurants I talked about and we don't offer peace, please take your name tag off. (laughs) If we're not offering them a peace that comes from Christ in our lives, who are you representing? Who are you speaking for? Because this is going to happen. You're going to have some noise. You're going to have some trouble. You're going to have some hard times, possibly today. But in the midst of those things, the calmness in your heart comes from this peace that Christ says can only come from him. Hold on to that. Hold on to that. If you've not experienced the the chaos of, of Christmas, it's coming. Happens every year. People get overwhelmed by it. Don't get overwhelmed by it. Remember this kind of peace that comes from Christ. So we lit this candle of peace today along with the candle of hope, that that candle represents for us our peace. The difference is that's going to get blown out at the end of the service. Don't let yours. Be sure you light your candle of peace, that you have that inside of you. And who knows what that's going to do around the world. It's a, 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 that, that kind of step you tell two people and they tell two people, then it starts growing and growing. Same thing can happen with your peace. You pass that peace to somebody then they have a chance to to pass it. Before you know it, you could go all over the world. Light your candle of peace. If that means physically lighting one when you get home, do it. That's great. Some of you do Advent candle lighting at home. That's great. But it may mean just a reminder when you wake up tomorrow morning to say, God, Prince of Peace, give me some of that peace today. Let us pray. God, thank you for that that peace that we talked about, that we know about, that that we've lived in and experienced for ourselves. But sometimes, God, we forget. Sometimes we we lose track of of the peacefulness that is within us and we let our candle kind of go out. So, Lord, some of us may be thinking right now, how can we pass that peace? Some of us may be thinking, how have I not passed that peace? So, Lord, as we continue to hear this beautiful music, remind us of your peace that passes all understanding, that's different than all the world, and may we share it with others. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And now it's your turn to sing. Let's fill this place with music as you stand and sing together. Angels, we have heard on high. Number 238 in your hymnal. Of course, the words are on the screen.
Would you all stand as we close? We'll sing together, Let There Be Peace on Earth. did great. Good job. And thank you everybody. Wonderful job. Thank you Scott Kesey. Wonderful music program here. Now you have to leave from this place, but what are you going to leave with? Peace. Go in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit and share that peace with somebody. Amen.